Hello, hello! So, in today's video, we get to show you guys how we became certified sailors. Over six days, we took a couple courses at a sailing school called Sailing Florida in St. Pete, and this is how we did it. Take a look. So, this is a 31-foot hunter that we are doing our classes on. You can see Adam <laughs> getting into the head berth. It has two berths in it cute kitchen, sink, and a microwave. Here we have the inside, inside nav station, I don't know what it's called. The head, it's got a pump. It's actually quite roomy in the back here. I'm surprised. Are you comfy? This one match cabins. It does not have a if you are taller than six feet, <laughs> so you. you won't fit. Oh, your so feet will definitely hang over or you'll be scrunched up. And then out here, Mass does not actually have back space. It only has these shrouds on the side. So that's something interesting if you didn't know that, because I did not know that. Alright, some of you might notice that I definitely used the wrong words when I was showing the inside of the boat, but this is why we're here. Day one, I learned everything I said was incorrect in the first video, <laughs> and uh, we definitely got to learn a lot more just in day one, and it was awesome. So today, during our 101 class, we have learned all the terminology, parts of the boat, different lines, how to tie knots, safety rules, stuff like that been very exciting and kind of stressful. It's a lot of information, but we'll get it. It's not stressful at all. It is stressful. No, it's Stop not. It. Yes, it, is. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be very nice. Unless there's a major wind shift, then stay aimed where you're at. You're good. with no wind so hopefully tomorrow we have a little bit more wind so we can learn better <laughs> instead of being so like shy about it um, but aside from that it was pretty easy first day was a success yeah he gave Maybe. us he gave us a thumbs up so <laughs> we think that's good that's good that's good yeah and now we're drinking sundowners we are not gonna be those people you are those people. Sundowners. We're having sundowners. Sun is going down, so it's sundowners. But yeah. And now Adam wants poutine, so we're at a bar <laughs> drinking. <laughs> but you have to prepare your liver because you're lightweight, anyways. And sailors drink a lot. I drink a lot. You don't drink at all. Two beers in, Adam's gonna be drunk. But yeah, day one. 
you're a bully. This is stress sweat from filming. <laughs> We were definitely way more nervous than we should have been. Test one was super easy, and we were definitely pleasantly surprised with our scores. Just got that photographic Boom. memory. I wish. We got the same answer wrong. After passing our ASA 101 test, we got to move on to a bigger boat on day three. Day three, we started ASA 103, and we moved on to a Genoa 389. It was a little bigger and a little different because it was a French-style boat with two helms instead of one. On day three, Captain Rick taught us it's really, really important that every time you go on a new boat or a boat in general, that you familiarize yourself with the guts and the inside of the boat by picking up floor pieces, looking under chairs, seeing where the pumps are, the valves, the different pieces of the, the insides of the boat. And this actually came super in handy later on in the day. And we will 100% always make sure to do this. And this is something we want to talk about. It's super important because knowing what you're driving and where things are is key to troubleshooting when something goes wrong. You pulling it in? And of course, later in the day, we realize exactly why we need to know where things are and how they work. Because randomly, we had alarms going off that our engine was overheating. And after further inspection, we saw there was no water coming out of the back of the boat. There was no water pumping through the cooling system. And we eventually decided on the theory that it must have been clogged. And we tried very hard to check different diagnostics and try different things. But eventually we had to turn around. But we definitely learned a lot from this experience. So it's day three for 101 or 103 classes. And we were supposed to do some sailing skills out on the water uh, because there's not much wind. So our backup plan was to do some power motoring. But our power motor went out on us and we think maybe something's clogged. So we could not do that either today. So I guess we're gonna hopefully practice docking and everything tomorrow. And right now we are waiting on our mechanic at the dock to hopefully help us out. And if not, then we get to go home early. Better luck tomorrow. Day four, ASA 103. So this is day two of ASA 103 classes. We took advantage most of the day of the great wind we had got. We were sailing along. We really felt like we started to get the hang of things. And then later in the day, we went over a few more things 
we actually got to practice docking. We got to practice tying up to a mooring ball, which took several, several tries. It's actually a lot harder than you think it would ever be. And then after that, we got to test everything we knew or thought we knew and got to learn with the exam number two. What's the difference? 93. Oh, I got four. <laughs> How many? 93. You got 97. Wrong? I got four more wrong than you. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. I wow. Say four wrong. We finally made it to day five and six, which is the best part of the whole course. Day five, we spent the majority of the day getting the boat ready to set sail. We spent it on an even bigger boat with another couple, and so we provisioned together with them. We got the boat ready, and it was by far the most exciting part of it all. So one thing we've noticed in our 104 class today is that most of the people who film their cruising and stuff definitely don't show you any of the girls' parts and right now, luckily enough, you guys get to see how we pump out our holding tanks, aka sucking up poop shoots. So now let's go take a look. Now, in addition to emptying our holding tanks, we also had to top off our water tanks and fill them back up with fresh water. And while we were doing this, we noticed that two of the tanks in the front were almost completely empty while the two in the back were barely even touched. And our Captain Rick said that this was something that was a little strange. And originally we thought maybe someone stayed in the front and only used the front water tanks on the last trip. But it actually ended up being that later on we found our bilge pump and our water pumps kept going off throughout the night and it turned out there was a leak in the boat from the two tanks that were empty before and it was really interesting to see how something you're preparing in the beginning can very well show you there's going to be something going wrong later on. So once all the preliminary parts were done, before we could actually set sail, we had to sit down with the other couple and choose an anchorage point and make a course to sail there too. And the course we chose actually ended up taking us under the Skyway Bridge, which is a pretty prominent bridge in South Florida. And it was huge, super cool to go under. And the first time under was super easy. Adam was at the helm. He was at the helm most of the sail, but we switched off with the other couple throughout the whole trip. And it was a nice, easy sail to our anchorage point. I want a center console thingy. <laughs> There's some really nice houses. 
So once we were done with our beer run, we got back to the boat and part of the 104 classes is that you have to make a meal for the rest of the crew members. So I made dinner and the other couple made breakfast and that was it. That was the end of day five and six. We got back to the dock, took our exams and passed and overall it was super enjoyable and I want to say thank you to Sailing Florida and Captain Rick for making it enjoyable for us. Thank you.